Good morning, everyone. I'm Connie Myers. It's 10 o'clock, so this must be to 70 and beyond. And I hope that your Saturday morning is starting off great. I see that some of you people on the East Coast might be getting a little snow later on today. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's going to be about 63 at my house today. So Missy and I are going to be going up to Tule Springs for a nice walk at the park. Anyway, um, today I want to talk about a book called Leadership in Trying Times. So I, was, I had the honor of being with 17 other authors and leaders, thought leaders. Uh, this book came out in September and it made it to number one in 11 different categories. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing every week, just like I did with Cheryl's book. And by the way, that was so much fun doing Cheryl's book. Uh, but we're going to go through this because I think December is the perfect time to start talking about how we transition to 2021. And as leaders, what can we do to make things a little bit easier? So the front cover, the, there's a quote here from Bart, uh, Brad Barton. He says, uh, leadership in trying times offers the distilled wisdom of some of the world's most influential thought leaders and communicators. Riveting stories, solid content, and practical advice for leading your tribe when your pathway gets a little rough. You think maybe our pathway's gotten a little rough this year? I think it has. Um, you're going to love this book. So um, in the intro, I'm just going to read the very first sentence. It says, there is one constant in trying times, leadership. That constant is our leaders who are trying to lead us through and out of a crisis. These leaders will be revealed for who they really are through what they say and what they do. Crisis reveal whether our leaders are trustworthy, have integrity, and have the strength of their convictions. Trying times exposes our leaders and strengths and weaknesses. So I'm part of a group called Speakers Without Border, and um, I have to tell you, People that are in this organ in this group are just amazing, amazing, uh, very insightful. Very, uh, they're some of the top leaders around the country. Um, so we're going to be going through each one of their chapters, and uh, we're going to be talking about them. So uh, my chapter happens to be the first one, resilience in disasters, and then the next one is ten R's of crisis management, a good crisis. I am enough. I am brave. I am a cowboy. Honoring your value. Eliminate excuses. How about that one, huh? What complexity science teaches us about social change? 10 ways to get along better with anyone, anytime, anywhere. Boy, can we use that right now? Especially since we're coming into the holidays. Being mentally tough and considerate in stressful situations. Great speaking is critical to great leadership in a crisis. When leaders can learn from a disaster to enhance their, what leaders can learn from, uh, from a a dancer to enhance their performance. On mentorship, six keys to organizations thriving, fitness essentials for powerful leaders during trying times. Um, that is one thing that I think is really important as we make sure that we stay physically fit. Leadership qualities to activate now, tragedy or blessing, that one really is a good one, on making powerful decisions and leadership and opportunities in the middle of a crisis. So. Those are all the chapters we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. Um, I'm hoping to have this done by New Year's or, or I think Monday, January 4th is the first week. So so my chapter happens to be the first one. So um, I wanted to talk about resilience in disasters. So it, the definition of resilience is building back better um, <clears throat> or at least building back to what was before. And I think it's really important to understand that in trying times, like the times we're going through right now, it's really critical for us to look how we can build back better. And don't you believe that um, some of the innovation and some of the things that people have come up with, with how to get together and um, how to do things uniquely in this time of, of distance, distancing and mass and all of that. Well, in the emergency management circles, resilience is a very common word. They look at resilience as, as far as the infrastructure of the community. They look at the uh, resilience of the of the community itself. They look at it for their businesses as well as their individuals. And, you know, when, when, you, when you see on TV, we've all seen this where uh, they will be interviewing somebody that's gone through a flood or a fire, whatever it is, whatever hurricane, whatever the disaster is. <clears throat> and you'll have some people that are very um, distraught. Everybody is distraught and everybody's upset. But some people expo express themselves differently. 
And, you know, they'll say things like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, you know, I've lost everything. And then you have others that say, um, we lost our home, but it was just a building. We are okay and we can rebuild because we are what makes a home a home. So that's the difference between the resilient mindset and a victim mindset. So, you know, I, I, in my, in writing my course that I've written, Crisis Knowledge Management Certification, um, I interviewed quite a few people about disasters. And one of the persons I interviewed was a woman who lives in, Ma who lived, lives in Malibu. And she was born and raised there. Her mom still lived in their family home. She had an office with 40 real estate agents, uh, approximately, in it. And, and then she and her husband just lived down the road from her family home. Well, her, mother, her family home was destroyed by the fires a couple of years ago in Malibu. Many of her agents either lost their homes or they were badly damaged. And her and her husband got the knock on the door, um, telling them they had 15 minutes to get out. Now, this is a, this is a very smart, savvy, got it together kind of woman. And she said what she did is spun around for about half of that time, trying to figure out what to take. And when they got to the shelter, they had, she had two little girls. I think at the time they were like four and six or something like that, but young little ones. And they got to the shelter and they had brought nothing for their kids. So it, it's important to understand that a resilient mindset is critical. Whether we're talking about a disaster, whether we're talking about some kind of a crisis in your office or your business or in your family, having that resilient mindset will help you to get through it. And many of the chapters in this book don't just talk about disaster. They just talk about difficult times like what we're experiencing right now. So what can we do to have a resilient mindset right now? Um, so the, the first thing that you want to do, and I've got, I've got six tips in this book. And by the way, this is available on Amazon. Um, I also interviewed a fire chief. Now, here's somebody that's been trained to respond, right? Trained to respond to all kinds of situations. He's also the head of what's called the CERT program, the Community Emergency Response Team. And if you want to be involved in your community, I highly recommend you look into this. There are over 600,000 volunteers in 2,700 different uh, communities across the country that have taken the CERT training, and it's free. It teaches hands-on experience like first aid, resuscitation, and light search and rescue, and that sort of thing. But it really helps you to be aware of what you need to do and what you need to have. Um, so I highly recommend, if you haven't looked into it, to do so. Well, this gentleman is the head of the Los Angeles CERT program. Now here he is, he's got all this training, he, they practice, they drill all the time. And when the fires happened, he lived in Woodland Hills. And when the fires happened, um, he was in the neighborhood and he had to stop and breathe because he was heading into fight or flight, fear, into fear and fight or flight. So he had to stop and practice his own, what he'd been trained to do to get himself back into being resilient and knowing what the next step is and reacting because the fire was in his neighborhood. So what you want to do um, in, in, the, in the emergency world, it, resilience actually means more than just building back as before. It means what can we do to mitigate whatever risk happened? What, what can we learn from the disaster? So if you've been through some kind of disaster, and many of us out there have this year because there's been all kinds of them, and it, over and above the pandemic, um, Take a look at your, the way that you've handled the pandemic, the way you've, if it's a flood or a fire, how you've handled that and what can you do both in, internally and with your fa family, your, uh, your office, your team, your staff, what can you do to help improve upon how you reacted? So let's take the pandemic for a second. There was a big, huge run on toilet paper. Well, that was because people were fearful. They were fearful they were never going to have toilet paper again, right? So the bottom line is, what can we do to be prepared to help us get out of that state of mind? And, uh, and how do we build back better? So if, if it was a fire, what could you do when you build back your home or if it's damaged and it's repaired to make sure uh, it's better? So maybe fire retardant materials in the property, on the property, making sure that it's cleared. In California, it's required to be cleared 100 feet from the home. Um, if, if you're not in California, what is a safe distance? If you uh, could be exposed to fires, um, uh, if it's floods, what can you do to mitigate, to be 
better prepared and what can you do to protect your home in a better fashion and then and then work on your resilient mindsets so in emergency management uh, circles they have something called an acronym called STOP and um, and this is something that I practice and you can practice this whether it's for your dealing with your kids dealing with your spouse dealing with a family member dealing with work you can use this for anything and the first thing is and I've got six tips in here and the first one is practice stop and stop is first of all s is stop so you stop everything you're doing and just give your brain a break and stop and then take some breaths take two or three minutes of breathing to help bring yourself back to the present moment then observe what's going on what are you feeling internally what is going on around you uh, and observe before you act and then proceed with conviction because you have a plan that's why plans are so important to make sure you think about different kinds of situations you might be in and plan uh, those plans come into play and all of a sudden your resilient mindset will kick right in so my second tip is breathe um, you breathe to stop and get to know what you're going to do but then also when you feel yourself getting anxious stop and breathe again and then when you do take action make sure it's decisive don't hem and haw about it just make sure you take decisive action and enact your plan whatever that plan is and then i think one of the most critical things is celebrate your successes what is what successes have you had from the day before? And maybe it's something as simple as getting out of bed. So celebrate that. It doesn't have it, the, the littler the success, the better it is. So celebrate those successes. And then look around and see the beauty around you, even if there's devastation. You know, quite frequently you'll see a picture like there'll be a, a tornado and there'll be a vase of flowers still sitting on the table, even though the house is gone. Observe what's around you and take in what is beautiful. If we look at it that way, um, I call I call these times crystalline moments. So crystalline means sparkly or clear. So crystalline moments are moments of clarity. Every disaster is a crystalline moment, whether it's a crisis in your business or home or or whatever. Um, crystalline means moments of clarity. So look for that gift or that opportunity that it is there, and there always is one, always, no matter how devastating something is. And then you have to believe that you can recover. So create a vision of what you want the outcome to look like. Recently, I had a friend who, uh, there was a car accident, the, the car went through the back of the garage. And um, at the time it was devastating and it was horrific and there was lots of damage. Um, the beauty and the gift was she got all new cabinets in her garage. She has the best looking garage in all of Vegas. So. Believe that you can recover. No, take take a look at what the vision you want that vision to be at the end, and then um, I'm just going to read this from my book uh, or from my chapter. Um, having a resilient mindset is important in any scenario, but in a disaster, it will be the difference between being prepared or panicking. In survival mode, it may be the difference between surviving or not surviving, and in recovery, it is the difference in recovering quickly or possibly not at all. Resilient mindset is the key to success. Preparation is the key to the resilient mindset. Our famous 2019 National Preparedness Month theme was be prepared, not scared. That really says it all. So in this, I mean, what a great gift to you and your family and your and if you have a business to your business to think about how you can be resilient in, in all of that and how you can create the plans you need to be prepared, to be resilient, and to not be scared. So I think the holidays is a great time to have us take a look at this and reflect on what we could have done better last year uh, through the pandemic or through any of the other disasters that happened. What could we have done better and then act, enact that plan for 2021? All right. I hope you have a beautiful Saturday. I hope that the holidays are upon you. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm trying to get in the mood, um, but I know I'll get there. And just have a beautiful week this week and really think about how you can be more resilient in 2021. I'll be back next week with the 70 and beyond. Have a great week. Bye now. Ugh.